Uh, we're, hello everyone, welcome to another episode of To Be Released. We're here in Media Res as uh, Zen just <laughs> did a summon and got uh, uh, the fusion. Let's see what fake he got. Out. It's a fake it, out? A fake out to transform in Goku? Are you shitting me? Perfect. But it is something I wish was a second fake out. No. And we're here with another good old episode of To Be Released. I'm just going to be pulling in the background during this until I get the one thing I'm after. Yep. So as everyone knows, it is Celebration Day, the one few times where, uh, what is it called, when both Global and Japan both get to share in the fact that they're both about to get fucked on their summons? Because mm-hmm. they got released the, the same time. time of To Be Released? Yes. Oh, yeah. In the end, what the reason why we have To Be Released. You know what's yeah, funny the very is... First time they- it was fucking like a nightmare. Yeah. I was talking to um, Nort, and he says that the current debacle is worse than to be released. In terms of, not in terms of our show. Did just sell in Gohan or did not meet expectations of being super overpowered? That's that's worse than to be released? I, I don't would, think so. I w- I, that's what I was saying is that he said that because, um, which I think has been not too well, Herculon obvious. Boo. Herculon Boo. How many Herculon Bukes can you get? I don't before? know, but it never seems to matter. And he didn't even go Super Saiyan 2. I'm going to fucking kill myself. All right. Uh, this video is going to get demonetized because I said I'm going to kill myself. Super Saiyan 3 Bardock. Great. Good thing it's my video, and I don't have any because I don't have a 1,000 subscribers <laughs> yet. So Super Saiyan 3 Bardock and Weerus. That's, yeah, great. Oh, that's great. Uh, but the thing that I was saying is I think we both come from the same of minds here where 2B release is worse on every asset because the card wasn't finished. Be released is probably the worst thing any gacha game I ever played has done. It is, and uh, not to uh, obviously shit on Nort because he's a uh, fantastic dude. Um, but his thing was is that he knew that the leader skill, what the leader skill was eventually going to be, so it was fine because the leader skill was good. And my point will always be the fact that they were too lazy to actually figure out a way to even give him the other part of their passive. Not yeah, they literally could have just made a nerfed version of the leader skill and then buffed them to full power when they got there. Yeah. Like uh, Brave Exvius does that. When they release a unit in global at the same time, they just make it weaker. It's off when it gets there. Yeah. And in terms of just like actual use, uh, there was actually no use to them because the only good thing about those cards was their leader skill. Everything else about them was trash. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta like counters, but all he has is key links, so he fucking sucks as far as I'm concerned. And then Omega Shenron. That's right. Is- he does have like a million key and links and like one attack link. Yeah, exactly. And it's not even the good one, Saiyan Roar, which gives him 25%. It's just like something like Saiyan Warrior Race, so he gets 700 attack or some stupid shit like that. He has Super Saiyan. I think he has regular Super Saiyan. All right, that's 10%. That's better. But I think to be released is just in Future general. Future Gohan, what in the... Mm. To be released as a concept is the worst thing because it was literally a sign of like when people were starting to say like I'm not going to summon a part of this I'm like Dokkan already knows that global is summoning they summoned on to be released and got them to number one yeah you can't you can't come back from that no there is no coming back from that they know for a fact that when it's hype time it won't matter because they already released a unit that was literally barely usable to the actual meta at the time fuck why do why would you give me a Thank you, Dragon Ball's animation, and the only SSR I get is the guaranteed one, and it's that stupid fusion. Uh, which fusion is it? Bardock fused with Go uh, with Goku. Oh, that unfortunate one. Yeah, that's not good. <sighs> but we digress too much about to be releasing all that stuff because now let's actually get to uh, the 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 unit of the hour. Today we're only going to be focusing on Gohan because I got limited time. So uh, we're, we'll, deal, we'll deal with Cell for another day because I have a feeling we need to sit on Cell just a little bit more so my actual feelings on Cell get 100%. Yeah, Cell went from the best unit in the whole game to the worst unit in the whole game, and I have a feeling that the real answer is somewhere in the middle. So. Yeah, but I can't do the knee-jerk reaction just yet. I think for Gohan, funny enough, has been basically the same for me since uh, he first was mentioned, but let's get into it. Uh, he is, this is Gohan, he is Super Saiyan Gohan, he is the LR, his category is Kamehameha, and it's 130% HP, and attack and defense 170%, and of course 3 key, or, uh, agility, uh, agility types 3 key and 120%, uh, then his super attacks are Raging Wasenko and Choji, I don't know what that is, 
Um, his passive skill is called Bloating Anger. Uh, his yeah. attack and defense get 100%, and then key plus 1 plus an additional attack and defense 10% at the start of each turn. Key up to plus 5 and attack and defense up to 70%. And then this is the part where everyone lost their mind. Here is his active skill. It is called Awakening. Awakens can be activated when HP is 58% or less with Android 16 on the team, or when HP is 58% or less an existing Android's category ally or an enemy starting with... Uh, starting from the fifth turn from the start of the battle once only, and then when he transforms... I'm confused and didn't go blue. I'm so angry. I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted of this shit. That's exactly as I, how I feel as I'm continuously it's trying to... It's our ultimate Gohan! I'm gonna... Die. Oh my god! And Gogeta... Oh my god. Okay, so there was a lot of SSRs and I hate them all. Perfect. And now that your anger has been released, uh, we talk about the his transformation where he turns Super Saiyan 2. His uh, super attack is called Gohan Explodes. That's his 12 to 17 key one. And then, of course, it's the father-son Kamehameha. His passive the animation skill, for that shit is fucking dope, by the way. It is super dope. Obviously, everyone has seen it, but it's beautiful when you can actually get it. And then his passive skill is attack 20% and defense 7% per key spear obtained plus an additional key plus one. First, key spear attained randomly changes key spears of a certain type to rainbow key spears when facing only one enemy. Launches an additional super attack when facing multiple enemies. Plus an additional attack, fifty nine percent when performing ultra super attack on your team. With another uh, one of those cards that's actually a Yu Gi Oh card. Yes, and Super Saiyan Goku has to be on the same team and attacking for him to get the fifty nine percent. And his link skills, it doesn't matter. And his categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Full Power, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Youth, Super Saiyan, Android, Cell Saga, and Kamehameha. And that is LR Gohan in a nutshell. So let's get a question about that Super Saiyan Goku thing. Go ahead. Um, Caller, go ahead. Would Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta count? I want to say no. It has to actually be Super Saiyan Goku. So, um, this is something that if you, I believe, uh, I've know this only because D Free keeps talking about it. But uh, if you go, if, according to D Free, if you go watch Go Rush's video, this is different from what Chi Chi has because Chi Chi has her passive skill that says any Kid Goku. That means that Kid Goku and Bulma can trigger her passive. But this one is saying specifically has to be Super Saiyan Goku. So you can't do it with Super Saiyan Goku Angel or anything else. It has to say Super Saiyan Goku. So that means the transforming Goku, uh, once he goes Super Saiyan 2, you can no longer trigger his boost. Weird. <laughs> yeah, but the um, dynamic Goku, once he goes into Super Saiyan Goku, it can. But it won't when he's in his base form. Um, That's why everyone's assuming the part 2 is going to be an LR Super Saiyan Goku. Yeah, everyone's assuming it's a Bye Guys Super Saiyan 2 Goku because... Uh, literally everything about this Gohan got a release of like, um, like the and like the Android 16. They made a brand new Android 16 specifically for Gohan. He's only good with Gohan. <laughs> That's not true. He's actually uh, pretty solid, but I would say you need Gohan because he gives him like a 50% uh, attack boost and shit. So he gives it to all Gohans too, by the way. So if you have LR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, the one with the shitty walk... Uh, he also buffs him by 50%, but, um... I like that Gohan's about to skyrocket in usage again because of the second version of Gohan's transformation. Yeah, and that the the best Link partner for... Oh, saw that teammate on it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is, this is Gohan. As we said before, his animations are freaking gorgeous. He has the... Ah, uh, they're so good. I know they couldn't do it, but it really bothers me that is um, the Gohan explodes his twelve to seventeen key uh, uh, super attack. It is the one where he fucking murders the Cell Juniors, and it does not have it when he uppercuts that their body gets split in half. Does do the uppercut though? He does do the uppercut. I thought it would oh, be really oh, like. Her ones are the zoomed in, like elbow to the face and everything that he does. It's fucking hilarious and it's awesome. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, and everything about his animations are great, and it turns out that getting his passive skill while tough is actually not that hard, uh, because apparently a lot of people are just running Android 16 with no boost on Kamehameha, so <laughs> that means you take, he takes a shit ton of damage. 
See that? Yeah, so... I don't know. I ended up being his pass. His active skill wasn't too bad. The only thing that I ever found a problem with it was the 58%, which was, I feel like, too low. But if you're using a unit that literally gets no boost at all, I guess that kind of solves your problem, especially since Android 16, the one that was specifically released uh, with in Gohan's banner, has like a crazy defense boost. So it actually kind of makes sense. He won't completely get ass blasted into the sky, but he'll be able to take enough damage where... Um, You'll be able to transform, and once you transform, I don't see how you're losing with this Gohan. Yeah, Gohan's pretty uh, fucking busted. Yeah, he's insane. He's similar to, uh, even in his Super Saiyan form, he is still crazy good. And once he goes into his actual other form, it turns into like an actual like slaughter fest, which is exactly what it was like when Super Saiyan 2 Gohan showed up. Up until uh, Cell just decided to, to vomit out 18 and blow himself up and then buy guys and all that other good stuff. So, yeah. This is uh, LR Gohan. Do you have anything else to say about him? I think we're both kind of like uh, uh, done in terms of these LRs. Like, I don't think I actually have it in me to fight it for anything. Like, oh, yeah. I, I mean, like, he's good. I th- think he's awesome. Yeah. I- I wish I had him. Or maybe I did get him. Check out my summon video. <laughs> the one that came <laughs> up before this one. Uh, so, yeah. How do you feel about this boy on the big boy scale? Uh, so, the transformation is, like, kind of whack. Yeah. I don't want to use Android 16 because nobody's favorite character is Android 16. It's true. But at the same time, like, yeah. Except, zero for, fi- people. except for Fighter Z's people. Yeah, but even then, you're not using him because you like Android 16. You're using him because he was good. Or because he um, likes Goku. Because of the Android 16 limitation, I cannot justify breaking the scale. Mm. Actually, no, fuck that. Those animations are too good. He's a 15 out of 5. Uh, I think that's fair. Uh, I think I'm I'm kind of leaning towards your thought process of like... I don't. I really don't like the fact that in order to actually get him, like, I guess in theory, no matter what, you were going to be using a Super Saiyan Goku. But the fact that of the units that you have to use is one it has to be a Super Saiyan Goku, and two, the other one has to be Android sixteen. And then from that point on, that's three of your that's three of your team slots, man. And then you get three for whoever you want next afterwards. And if you're running the um the cell version of it which is the android slash cell saga then you get even less because that's four right there and then you get two slots open i prefer units where i literally can use uh anyone as long as it fits the actual parameters of the team so for there to be a unit that's a a bit limiting to team building which is a shame yeah i was fine with it i'd like i like kid chi chi's version of the passive because it's literally like it doesn't matter because as long as i have a kid goku on the team so that includes lr kid goku and Aureli, that includes um the brand new lr kid goku and bulma like that's perfectly fine but actually having it to be like so limited kind of puts me off on him but also he has gorgeous ass animations <laughs> It also reminded me, I also noticed that I should have made the joke before it happened, but I was like, Dokkan's just going to release the colored version of what Orc Collection did, and then they totally did do that. They did. They really did. They really did. So I'm going to give him a, a 5 out of 5 for me. So that makes his final score a 20 out of 5 on the big boy scale. Real that pretty. That sounds fair. Yeah. I also don't like his pose in his Super Saiyan 2 form, but... Uh... It's fine, because you're mostly just going to see the Super Saiyan 1. Yeah, <laughs> which is awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, all right, then. Let's go on to some questions now, now that we got that out of the way. Let us let me find some questions. Let's start with the YouTube ones. Uh, first question. Uh, this is not a question. I just thought it was really funny. Uh, this is Ricardo talking about... Um, he puts me in quotes and says, Hey, how about instead of having consequences, put a joke? He says, damn, that's a low blow to Disney Marvel. (laughs) When we were talking about Spider-Man last week. (laughs) That's funny. And then uh, it's really funny. So that's, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, and then we got a uh, YouTube question. It's from Epa. 
It says, questions for to be released. With the climb to 1,000 subs, can you predict the Dokkan celebration that will coincide with that event? Uh, obviously, it will be at the same time as Go- as uh, the Rayleigh return, as the return of a Rayleigh comes in. <laughs> so, that's the yeah, most... Yeah, look fun. forward to that. Yes. LR Rayleigh. Yeah, LR Rayleigh. I'll be the only one pulling on it. Me and Goresh will be the only one pulling it, and then Goresh will actually pull her, and I will be unable to. <laughs> Uh, Probably. That sounds right. Yeah, I actually don't know. Like, I, I, if I had a real guess about what would be the next celebration around the time I got a thousand subs, it'd probably be the um, the Boo Arc celebration for this, where it's actually I, they can't do that, right? They're not about to release a fucking LR Ultimate Gohan, right? He doesn't. He's not even the final. <laughs> he's not the final fight of that. Arc. I don't know. I feel like actually, right? Maybe there has to you know what it has to be? It has to be LR Hercule. And it has to be him yelling at the people it's too. It's finally time. Yeah. It's finally time. LR Hercule and Goku. So it's Goku like charging up the spirit bomb. It actually should be technically LR Go- LR Hercule, Goku, and Vegeta, but it's Vegeta takes all the hits and Goku's always in the background charging the spirit bomb. <laughs> That's I would be okay with that. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty good. I think that would be the actual next celebration, the next big celebration. I can't imagine. That or it'll be Jiren and um, Ultra Instinct. That's the only other thing I can think of in terms of like what would be the big thing. So, there we go. Fucking pissed when LR Jiren look at fucking angry. Yeah, that fucking pissed off. The one where he just looks wrong <laughs> in every sense of the word. Uh huh. There you go. Look forward to that. And look forward to me getting that 1,000 subs. It's going to happen someday, I swear. No way. <laughs> Look how fast I'm just uploading stuff now. That obviously means that more people will subscribe. <laughs> All right, let's go and see the Twitter questions now. So let's start because we have, I think, a good bunch of them. Uh, it's almost like there's something going on in Dokkan. <laughs> Weird. Weird. Uh, first question comes in from that one Jake guy who asked, if you could design an LR card, who would it be? How would their active skill work? Um, and not counting LR or Rayleigh because uh, that would be too easy for me. I would say if you are actually going to do the LR by guys, I would love it if um, using his... Uh, so one of the funny things people thought it would be is that his active skill would actively like um, kill you <laughs> because he dies right yeah, afterwards. So the Gohan can transform. Yeah, I would say, like, it would actually just drop you down to 50% or so. Even if you want to be super good, it drops you down to 10%, because then you could actually activate Cell's passive skill and also the LR um, Vegeta, Vegeta, Vegito and uh, Gogeta at that point. It just drops you to one health. Yeah. So he could be pretty good in the right hands and in the right teams. Uh, that would be my kind of LR design, because I would actually want something where it actually, like, hurts you, because getting the enemy to hurt you fucking sucks. And if you go yeah, too it's far... it's not easy to do. No, it's not easy at all. So, if they can improve that, that'd be great. What do you? What about you, Zen? What do you feel? Uh, I want an LR Ultra Instinct, the active skill, and it just puts him into, like, a Rebrion or a Beerus mode or whatever you want to call it, where it's all just him. Oh, okay. The shit out of everything for the rest of the match. And he actually gets his full key so that uh, he actually does something, as opposed to all yeah. the LRs that transform. Yeah. Alright. He doesn't get additional key, like, to start with, but then every time he dodges an attack, he gets more key. Alright. I could see that. I could see that. That'd be cool. Uh, next question comes in from Nighthawk. He says, first off, I just want to say thanks for reaching out to Poppy D Free for me. Question last time. That was so nice. Thank you very much. Oh, I I paused at the wrong time. And then he's just saying thank you for uh, me asking D Free how he felt about Krillin not getting a summonable unit yet. (laughs) Uh, My question for this week is, do you think we'll ever get to see Polnareff land? And then he shows a picture of what I assume is Polnareff imagining his own Vegas style land with like a uh, silver chariot and all that other stuff around him like a Disneyland, but all themed to Polnareff. Uh, Vento Ario spoilers. No, I mean, there's a possibility. He's still, <laughs> he's still around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think it'd be really funny if, like, uh, you know, in that form that he's in uh, at the end, he's just, like, running the place. I don't know, built it for him with all the fucking mob money. Yeah, exactly. So he could be happy. It's the only thing Polnareff has ever asked for. He never asked to be returned. All he ever asked for a theme park themed entirely around himself. It's like, this is beautiful. What I always wanted. We'll see. I, uh, <laughs> um, maybe in a game, maybe if uh, Pitter Patter Pop ever starts doing weird things based off of... Um, Pitter Pop did get an event where you got to buy furniture for a room that was entirely themed around weird-ass cockyween stuff with, like, the cherries and everything. So it's possible. There you go. Just look to Pitter Patter Pop. It'll do it someday. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, who says, did I win? And then he shows us his Japanese box, which is finally he has Int Goku Black. He has STR uh, Rose. He has the Agility Zamasu. He has Tech Merge Zamasu. He has LR uh, Rose and Zamasu. And then he has that weird abomination monster that has the rose hair from Heroes. Uh. <laughs> And then he was uh, I guess he won, but at what cost? He also used his red coins to get that Zamasu. He shows that off too. And that from the tickets, he got LR Goku Black. And then he says, it cost me more than 650 free-to-play stones to complete this. <laughs> oh, and then he has so, a, vi- he has a video. Guess, kinda. He has a video. This is so good. It's the Thanos video. He puts me over Thanos. And then little Gamora, it says Wokey. <laughs> and then it says, was it worth it? It's the actual <laughs> video playing through it all. <laughs> oh, God, Johan. You go above and beyond for some incredibly crazy-ass jokes. He seems pretty content at the end, so... I'm glad yeah, you were it, able to... If you think you won, then you won, buddy. Yeah, exactly. If you won, you won. Don't I... let anybody take that shit from you. Exactly. You got your Zamasu team. Now you just need to wait till they release more Zamasu and Goku Black stuff. The long they will run. a billion times over. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you for the question uh, and all the stuff. Uh, next question comes in from Super Bright Adrian, who asks, "Are you ready for Nero Fest and whatever happens next?" Now, Zen Nero Fest is a thing that happens in uh, Fate Grand Order, where they just decide that for the next two weeks you should do nothing but grind, and there's no story, so it's an awesome event <laughs> and it's really good. <laughs> It has like Choose a. To believe that it is an event based around Nero from Devil May Cry coming to Teppan, and yes, I'm ready for that. <laughs> it's actually very close. They both share the name Nero. It all. It all. It is all. It is a festival dedicated to Nero, and it's pretty good. And uh, I haven't started it yet because it has an hour long cutscene right before, so I just don't have time to sit. The down. worst gotcha game ever made. What the fuck is this shit? The the reason it's so long is because it's, like, literally showing you every character, but there's no, like, after that, there's no, like, actual story cutscenes afterwards. So, it's similar to how, like, Metal Gear Solid Five starts, where it's, like, a really long intro that makes you think that the story's about to be super in-depth de- in or something. And then the next 60 hours is you fucking around in a desert with no cutscenes. <laughs> That's what uh, the setup for Nero Fest is. So I just haven't had the time. It's super long. Speaking of super long, you should check out my video for Arjuna's interlude, which took close to an hour to finish. It was a, it was a lot of reading. It was also a lot of me failing to win the fight with the parameters I set for myself. So um, that's the reason why it took a little bit longer. And it, but if even if you took out my one failure, it still would have been 40 minutes long. And it was me reading this Jesus. character's side story that uh, becomes... Does, it doesn't become important to the story, but it does lead up to something that shows up two years later. Which is crazy to say. <laughs> I'll stop playing this shit. Play Pokemon Masters. It's good. I'm not going to play Pokemon Masters. I don't need another Pokemon game to disappoint <laughs> me on my phone. It's pretty I, good. I'm surprised at how good it is. I'll see. I'll see how it is. So yeah, I thought um, it was going to be shitty, but it's actually not shitty. All right. That's good to hear. And also my answer is yes, I'm ready. And so are, so are you when Nero finally shows up to Teppin. I'm ready for Nero Fest dropping in Teppin. There you go. <laughs> I'm so ready for that. Uh, next question we got is from Ignit. Uh, 
I don't know. There's no Vegeta at the end, so I don't know who this Ignan is. And he says, what's the most boring movie you've ever seen? And it is a, uh, uh, the gif of Luigi looking at the book and falling asleep. And then Jonathan Joestar shows up and says, adding on to that, what's the most boring game you've played recently? And then someone else who uh, I think just decided that he should answer this question himself, who's called Attack on Titan Sensei, says that would be Xenoverse 2. Shit died after me so fast after the God Vegeta DLC. Lol. So I don't know what that guy I thought. Think... He's not a part of this, but. Really, he has some hangups with uh, Universe 2. Yeah, well, a lot of us did. Uh, so what's the, so let's start with the first one. What's the most boring movie you've seen, you've ever seen that you can recall? Dog Millionaire. Hmm. Okay. I've ever walked out of. Fair, fair. Uh, for me, this is probably the most controversial one, I'll say, depending on how much of a geek you are. I think all three Lord of the Rings movies are one giant long as boring movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. They're like uh, a really cool hour's worth of content wrapped up in like six hours of really boring other things. Yeah, and uh, to the people who care about those really boring details, I'm sure they were very happy with their movie. I still think they're boring as shit to get through. (laughs) And for the good stuff that does get in there, it's just not worth it, in my opinion anyway. I also feel the same way about the books, by the way. That first uh, Lord of the Rings book is maybe one of the most hardest skips I've ever seen in my life. As I got 200 pages in, I was like, these motherfuckers are still waiting for Gandalf? What is going on? Like, an entire yeah. year passes, and they haven't done shit, and then they leave, and then they go fuck around in a cabin for, like, a couple months. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, That goes for movies. And in terms of most boring game... I don't know. When was the last really play? Game? I don't really play boring games. If I play a game and I don't like really like it, I just stop. Uh, oh. I guess. Uh... No, man, I don't think I have one. Does... Hmm. It's tough because ever since Dokkan added the um, ability to just waste a bunch of stamina at one go, it's actually been way harder to get bored with Dokkan because I finished so quickly. Hey, you can waste a bunch of stamina in one go? Yeah, with the, the new. Once you beat a stage and then you just click and do like double stamina. If you do like one of those Dokkan Fest uh, fights, it's 25 stamina, but then if you click it and you get double drop rates, it will be 50 stamina. So in essence, you only need to run it three times and then not have to deal with it for the rest of the day. I didn't day. know about that. Oh, that changes everything. Yeah. So there you go. Beat the stage one time, normal, and then you can do... The only problem is that you get three charges a day, and they charge at eight hours a time. It's that mechanic where I said, like, it sounded like Dokkan introduced something very good and then immediately regretted it. Oh, and made it way worse immediately afterward? Yeah. Yeah, It it was a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan's passive of its day when it was released a couple months ago. Uh, Except for it was actually real. That was actually a terrible limitation. But, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, like... Uh, most games I have a lot of fun playing for the most part, even like really weird. Oh, you know what? It's, it has to be, um, I hate to call it out like this, but it has to be Reshif of Destruction. Oh yeah. That game sucks. (laughs) It does suck. And I want to continue it, but also I don't want to grind Tristan for another two hours. Yeah. That's all you do is you just walk around and you fight Tristan a lot of times. Yeah. Unfortunately, if we, if I had the ability to stream, I would just say, Come join our Grind Tristan stream and it'd just be me and you talking to each other for two hours. But that'd be it. But uh, there you go. That's the most boring, boring game I've say, I've played re- recently. So thank you both, Jonathan, Joestar, and Ignant for your questions. And also congrats on Ignant for getting to 1,000 subscribers. Yeah, good job. Yeah, good job, dude. I'll see you there eventually, someday. I'm making my slow <laughs> ass over there. <laughs> Refusing to compromise your uh, your integrity for the, what's it called, the algorithm. Exactly. I refuse to not have a channel that supports Hello Kitty flower gardening as a possible video <laughs> I can do. Uh, next question comes in from Most Creative Name, and he says, did you miss me? I'll say, yeah, it's been a while since you've submitted a question. I remember everyone who <laughs> submits question, and you... <laughs> <laughs> and you and you never change your header, so it actually helps me remember you. So, yeah, welcome back. I don't know why you were gone, but I'm glad you're here. 
Uh, Zen, do you feel the same way? You didn't answer. Uh, they got cut off <laughs> by the internet. Oh, I, I said sure. There you go. Uh, next question comes in from positive hashtag watch Bakuman. See, now I have a feeling that if people start putting their hashtag read my whatever manga or watch my anime, that that's endorsement. I just want to let it be known right now. Uh, even for the good ones like Dr. Stone, I do not endorse any <laughs> of the read or watch things that are in people's <laughs> usernames. I endorse Dr. Stone full on. Yes. But that's because I like Dr. Stone. But I'm going to tell you that to my face. I'm not going to change my name to Wokey Free hashtag uh, read Dr. Stone first and then maybe check out the anime later. <laughs> uh, but his question is, who is your favorite uh, Summer 4 servant and Fake Grand Order and why? This is a question only to me because you don't know what any of these, all these titty waifus may as well look the same to you. Uh, it's Nero from Teppin. There you go. Dear from Teppin is your favorite uh, Fake Grand Order uh, Ooh, waifu. It's Morgan. There you go. Oh, man, Morgan's very good. I would uh-huh. love... Damn, that's a very good answer. Uh, my favorite of the Summer Four Servants is probably the um, the Bunny King. I think it's really funny that they decided to put her in a bunny outfit, and I think that's great for Summer. And if there was a second option, there's, uh, there's Melt, is a girl who wears a penguin costume with shades on, and it is the most funniest thing in the world. <laughs> If I that ever, good. yeah, if I ever get her, I'm removing, I'm like, I have to fully awaken her and then I'm going to set her shit back to the penguin costume and I'm only going to keep it on that. And then I'll keep, uh, put on the shades on her. Cause that is too good of a design for any character. It's being a penguin costume. So there you go. That's my answers. I hope you will like them. Also the free unit was very good. Uh, I can't pronounce her name cause it's Japanese. I believe it's Hakusoi. The, 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 the artist who made the, um, the octopus drawing. I can't remember his name, though. Whatever. She's pretty good, too. So there you go. And, of course, Zen is Nero or Morgan from Teppin, depending on his mood for that day. And next question we got in is from Air Fighter, who says, Do Dr. Stone Magna... Uh, Magna? Magna? Manga ASMR when? Um, Sorry. If I... If if I wasn't so busy, I would have asked Zen already to record his lines for our Doctor Stone, with anim- <laughs> with anime music in the background reading of Doctor Stone. But I've been very busy. But don't worry, good we- time, friends. It's all- it's on the schedule. It is on one hundred percent on the schedule. Don't we? You won't know when it's about to drop. But once that video is finished, I will give it to Zen. Uh, chances are it will be uploaded on my channel because if it gets uploaded on Zen, Jen's, Zen's channel, it'd be un- very unfortunate if he got copyright struck, but I don't care. So, <laughs> so that's the way it will go. So just wait for that, man. It's going to be awesome when it happens. Just you wait. Uh, we're also going to have to figure out who, which one of us is going to do the girl voice because <laughs> I don't think we can pull it. Everyone the- thought you were a girl for like eight months. So it's probably has to be you. Ah, shit. But then that it's gonna be weird because it's gonna be like me um, uh, talking to myself. That's gonna happen no matter what because there's only two of us and there's more than two characters. All right, you're f- fair enough. I'm just gonna have to insert my inner um, uh, inner me. Also, I just got a message from a good old Mister Eat Your Butt, a good friend of mine. As uh, he's been, I've been constantly like he's been very busy, obviously. Mr. Yibut is a man of a lot of time, so I've been asking him to make a better layout for me that is not just a whooper and jean to the side. <laughs> and uh, it's taking a while because I didn't give him any instructions other than, I don't know, make a gotcha layout that could work for every single gotcha <laughs> in the history of the world. <laughs> and he's very busy, so uh, I, I told him I needed it for the summons, and I said, you got about 12 hours, and 14 hours later he said, I just saw this, fuck me. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him it's cool, dude. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, intro into the life of of Wokey's business dealings. Yeah, my business dealings, which is uh, being with my friends, always asking them very politely, politely if they can help me, and then being fully understanding if life is in the way because <laughs> it's like it's all good, dude. I'm gonna be here. Yeah, no shit happens. What. what are you gonna do? Exactly. We'll see. We'll see. If uh, if you see the summon video before this and it has a layout, that means that Mr. Eat Your Butt made it in time. All right, let's continue on with these questions. 
Uh, the next question comes in from Melly D. Melio D. I cannot pronounce your, your name, my dude. So I'm going to guess it. It's Melio Delph. And his at is called I am Wongatron. Uh, and he asked, if Goku were to be put in Teppan, what would his hero arts be? Sensu Bean. That means automatically get back at 30 HP. <laughs> full, full health recovery. Full health recovery. And it's at like 50. So you have to actually build up to it by a large amount. Uh, and then one would be Kamehameha, which would destroy all enemy units. Yes. On the entire enemy board. And, and then one would be uh, Super Saiyan. Yeah, that would be similar to Nergagante's where he changes everyone in his deck to plus two, plus two when he gets below 15 HP. But because it's Goku, he gets like an insane, but like everyone's cost goes down by two. <laughs> like it, it just goes insane. Everyone's cost goes to one. And they oh. get plus three, plus three. Yes. And then uh, every card also gets Explore for Vegeta. So you automatically get the Dying Vegeta <laughs> when you... Yeah, and the Vegeta card, all that is, is you play that card when one of your units is about to die, and it dies instead. Yeah. I would actually love it uh, for... This would be really silly, but, like, um, if the DB... Uh, if DB Heroes... Uh, DB... I don't know why I'm having trouble. Dragon Ball Heroes actually came to Teppin. That the ones that had, uh, all the ones that have been revived from Dragon Balls all have revenge. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I can it, get behind that. Yeah, I think it'd be really funny. So you know, if uh, Capcom wants to get it done, get it done. They have the JoJo's license in their catalog, so it's possible. Also, update on Mister. E, but I'm gonna say it's cool to have it by the weekend. So he's not gonna make it in time. But he's gonna do it, I swear. <laughs> Look for one of these days. He'll do it. He's a man about time. Uh, next question comes in. Thank you for the question. Uh, next question comes from Red Shadow, who asks, "Why do you like Dokkan?" Mm. Let me see. Do you objectively? The... I don't. But I don't know. It's fun doing things with your friends. I think if you want to really get down, I've been, I've been me, I've been thinking about maybe potentially doing a video about this. Just the ins, the idea of like the the weird way that Dokkan has gone beyond just being a game for me. It is now like literally like this. I don't know. It's kind of like that feeling you get. Like you ever you remember when you watch movies of kids? Like I guess for Sandlot, and they would be like. These guys are friends because they all played uh, baseball together. And it was this one activity that kind of they all do and they all become friends over it, basically. Like, that's yeah. their that's their go-to. For a modern-day equivalent, like, I never actually had that growing up because I wasn't really into baseball all that much because I couldn't really play it. And I knew for a fact that if I were... And in classic Wokey fashion, uh, fashion, if I wasn't going to be good at something, then why do I bother trying to do, be doing it? Well, that's fair. So I just never ended up getting into any like kind of sport things. And it wasn't until actual Dokkan came around where I was like, I looked into like the actual community and through Dokkan, like I started asking questions not ask. I started answering questions in the questions thread and then Violet found me and was like, this guy's just answering questions by himself <laughs> without anyone, like ever, <laughs> literally everyone. Uh, he's not really asking for anything, but and then she says, would you like a title that just says that you're a team, you're a question answer? And I would like to say for the record that I'm the only person in the history who has ever had that title because there have been plenty and of team answers. <laughs> yep. Uh, there have been plenty of team builders. There might be a new one in the qu weekly question thread. Who knows? I haven't checked in a while because, uh, it hurts to look at the sub sometimes just because I always remember I'm not a mod there anymore. So it hurts. <laughs> Sad um, memories. Exactly. But of course, you know, they're doing fine without me for the most part. It's all good. So the the answer to why I like Dokkan is because without Dokkan, I wouldn't be here talking to people. I wouldn't know Zen. I wouldn't know D Free. I wouldn't know a lot of people. Like, if you want to go even further for it, like, my sister wouldn't know Alex if it wasn't for Dokkan. Like, if you want to yeah. go f super into it, like, for some reason, this game, which is not the greatest game in the world has impacted my life in such a way that it's like when you actually stop and think about it you go i can't believe i can't help but like you because you've done this you're still kind of a bad game but you're my bad it's game. like when you yeah it's like you know you have a pet that's really shitty yes his name is uh, and every 
<laughs> but I love him. I, this dog fucking sucks. And you're like, yeah, I know, but he's my shitty dog. And I have a lot of really bad times dealing with his shit. And then sometimes at night, I look at him while he's sleeping, and I'm like, aw. It makes it... That, that's Dokon. Makes it all worth it. Exactly. Is that the, the And that's why I like Dokon. And in terms of actual playing of it, it ebbs and flows for me. Like the actual playing of it, sometimes I have a lot of fun. And then I have to take a really long break and I'm, all I'm doing is daily logging in. And that's perfectly fine with me right now. It's kind of like the people who I assume are in a larger scale, like all the people who went back to WoW Classic. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that WoW Classic is actually an actual terrible game when you look at it from the basis of it's so old compared to how it is now. But that doesn't matter because all the people who grew up playing it, who grew up loving it, love that specific version warts and all. So they're like, hell yeah, it will take me seven hours to get to level 10. I don't care. Or like <laughs> level five. I want that. It's like, not always about the end result. Sometimes it's just about the feeling you get on the journey. Exactly. Exactly. And that is why I don't know if you were looking for a serious answer when you asked, why do you like Dokkan? But there you go. There is the serious. Yeah, it felt a little baity, but that's the, that's the real, that's the, that's the truth. Yes, that's the truth. And finally, these last two questions, well, this one's going to be very easy. It is opinion on this image and it is, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to show it to you. I, it's the, um, Koichi from, part four and i don't know if it's been edited but it looks like he has like the the the, the no nose krillin to me so let me quickly look find where the fuck discord is on, is on my phone did i lose discord is this what is this what's happening is that i somehow <laughs> fucking lost discord on my phone <laughs> i'm gonna send it to you on a twitter message because i literally cannot find uh <laughs> i cannot find it on my phone uh there you go Sense. Oh God. Okay. So I don't think that's been edited. I think that when he um, thank God it's not the Koichi picture that I thought it was. Oh, you, did you think I was gonna send you a very unfortunate Koichi picture? <laughs> I thought it was gonna be the Koichi picture from Spoke Rohan Kashibe, which is the worst thing ever. Oh, thankfully um, it's not that. Talking about. He just says, "What's your opinion on this image?" I'm asking if you know what the the spoke Rohan Koichi looks like. No, I don't think so. Okay, hey, well, get ready for this shit. I'm gonna send it to you on Discord right now. Okay. Completely off topic. I do like that picture. That that's energy. But, yes. but uh, here you go. For this is the opposite of that picture. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what, have, what have you done to my boy? What have you? Yeah, that is the spoke Rohan Kashibe Koichi. That looks like fucking Guile got unfortunately like uh, umified <laughs> or something. Like it was the most. It's really bad. I know it's awful. That's bad. Is that unit coming to Pitter Patter Pop? This specific look <laughs> with this art. Yeah. Oh no. I think it'd be funny. I, I'm in uh, in general. I'm also positive on this image. I like Koichi from what I remember of him. It's been a while since I've read Part Four, so I just remember him being a cool little tiny guy. And also, he makes a cameo in the beginning of Part Five. It's fitting, also, because he's like a Gohan and Cell reference. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, fitting. Good job on the and his uh, the, that person's uh, avatar was also a Gohan, so it all fits. And the final question all coming together. Yes, and the final question comes from Goku Mania, who asks, "Do you think?" Also, I think his ad, his ad is called Mania Goku, so that means he lost the ability to be called uh, Ad Goku Mania, <laughs> so, which is funny. Uh, he thinks, "Do you do you think that the new LRs are crap?" And I think we can both pretty easily say, "Just like no." Nope. I think people incorrect. No. They are not crap. Listen, man, if you want to go back to me calling new units crap, you need to go back to, like, the old Modcast days where I was more <laughs> happy to call any unit crap that was released. Nowadays, I think most units are perfectly solid, built from the ground up, 
they might not blow my mind, but the idea of them not being good. Like, for example, Super Saiyan 4, Vegeta, and Goku, they don't blow my mind. They're still good, though. Like, there's no... If anyone, anyone who thinks they're bad is, like, I think actively wrong or Zaha-level trolling or something. Yeah, they're... Yeah, no. It's just, like... Yeah, I don't think there's any real, like, modern-day... Um, Dokkan Fest has been released in a year where I can actively say this unit's actually bad because for the most part, even if like something about like their uh, either their um, passive skill, their leader skill, something is off about that, it still ends up being fine. Like the Piccolo has a weird category for his passive skill, not passive skill for his uh, leader skill. Um, that doesn't change the fact that his active skill and um, passive are still very good. Uh, unfortunately, you actually can't turn into his better form. Because there's no other Namekian that is in the Android Cell Saga. So if you run him on that team, he can never transform. Oh, that's a shame. It's a big shame. Um, until they decide... Yeah, unless they release a Kami that's ready to be absorbed by Piccolo or something. Unfortunately, they've decided to release... Um, What's-his-nuts first? Nail instead of a new SSR Kami. Because the only SSR Kami that exists is in the DB banner. And he's not in the Android Cell arc. Uh technically speaking because that one's based off the dragon ball one but whatever they're good there's no hiding the fact that they're good even cell who is not great still is an insane damage dealing unit with terrible links but that's about it yeah Yeah, basically yeah. yeah so with that that is every single question we got for to be released uh I'm going to tell Mr. Booty that it's going to be fine to have it done this weekend because I've been leaving him hanging this entire time. I don't want him to think I'm angry at him. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that <laughs> that album sounds good, dude. Sounds good, dude. There we go. We'll leave it off on a positive note. Sounds good, dude. I'm still disturbed by this Koichi picture. I'm going to look away. Let's That's end the show. problematic, Koichi. Yes. Let's end the show, Zen. So okay. remember, everyone... If you play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. That's no good. See ya. <laughs>